Hello and welcome to a really shitty HDR mastering tutorial. We're going to be using DaVinci Resolve uh, Studio 16, but you can do this on the free version as well. The video files I'm using I captured on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in Blackmagic RAW. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and start a new project here. And again, I'm using the studio version, but you can do this in the free version, although there's a couple things in the studio version that make it a little bit easier. Uh, I should preface this by saying that to do this properly, you're definitely going to need an HDR monitor to be able to see your rendered files and make sure everything's you know working fine. Um, ideally, you'd have a secondary HDR monitor or your primary HDR monitor as a secondary monitor. Um, hooked up to a internal Blackmagic uh, playback card, so you need that in a PCI Express slot. On Mac, I'm not too sure what you'd have to do for that. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and start this. So we'll go to our project settings here, and I'll be working in, uh, well, might as well set it to 4K, and I'm just using a scope, because why not? This is just for uh, 4K stuff. I just wanted to fill the frame. Now, over in color management, we're going to go ahead and go to um, color managed right here. And all we'll do is put the input as. I'm going to select my uh, black magic here 4K film gen 4. And then your timeline color space should be. 2100, Rec 2100, and ST 2084, and your output will be the same. And I go ahead and click this. HDR mastering is for 1000 nits. I believe, I don't know if it, on the free version, I don't know if you can select this. Um, it really shouldn't matter. I think this is just a metadata thing that tells uh, the player that 1000 is the max uh, peak. But that's fine. Also, uh, in the free version, you don't get HDR10 support or Adobe Vision, but I'm not doing that because this is just for YouTube, and to be honest, I don't know the standards for those. Um, I believe everything else should be just fine. And I'm going to go ahead and start pulling in some stuff. Alright, so I've got a couple of files here that I'll we'll start with, and I'll just drop it in here. Move to the color page. And um, you'll see here, if you're on the free version, you won't see this, and you will not be able to see this. But uh, for the studio version, you have to go up to Preferences, and go over to User, Color, and then enable HDR scopes for 2084. That'll basically just change it from your standard to uh, the HDR uh, mastering. So that way, you know, if you're mastering for well, 10,000 peak brightness or a thousand, but we're we're headed for a thousand here. And this is just a marker that I've set, so you can ignore that for right now. So what we'll start off with is I've created a um, sort of an intermediate or beginner or starter, I should say, LUT. So we do that, and we've already sort of got it in the general area of where we want it to be. And currently, I am editing this on an HDR monitor. However, I'm not able to preview this. Uh, preview window in HDR. Um, that's just a limitation of DaVinci, I guess. You need a separate, or you need the, your HDR monitor as a second monitor, um, and you need Blackmagic's uh, internal PCI Express card that supports 4K and HDR. 
uh, and then that way the player will just run through there and you'll be able to see it on there but I won't be able to do it so I'm sort of uh, editing this blind um, I'm sure a lot of other people might be doing that as well because I can't afford all that stuff anyway so you've started this we'll go ahead and add another node and basically if you notice here this is an interesting thing between the 1 and 10, 10, 100, and 100 and 1,000, they're all relatively the same distance. So you'll notice that right here, 1 to 0, uh, it's not necessarily that much, but on the display here, it's actually a lot. So if we don't want this stuff blowing out completely into the blackness, we'll want, obviously want to raise it a little bit. Um, however, you know, I've done this shot and I don't care about the detail in this area, so I'm just gonna go ahead with this. I would prefer it to be kind of darkened. And what I'm gonna do is actually just darken it a little bit more. Now you want your mids and everything else to be sort of in this general 10 to 100 range. That's where you want your mids. And your peaks, which will ultimately be your brightest part of your area or your frame. Uh, in this example it's this neon tube and we're gonna want to get that up to the 1000 mark. Now there's two ways we can do that. We can either just go into the primaries and go into the gain and change that and you'll see it'll stretch out everything else which is good or bad depending, depending on what you need. For me I'm gonna go ahead and do that a little bit. As you can see I don't really want that to go away too high to the hundred that's this bit right here and it's you know it's not really supposed to be even in that mid range so actually I'm going to leave that there but I'm going to switch over to my log and raise those all up to a hundred here or a thousand I'm sorry and you should be able to see that just this part touches it uh, one thing I should mention if you're using Blackmagic RAW a good tip to use is to go ahead in your camera raw settings, change it to clip, and then turn on your highlight recovery. As you'll notice here, it sort of extends that clipping past it. So, you know, it's a good starting point. So now I, I actually don't need the log there, the, those corrections. I'll just raise it just a little bit right there. And now let's say your range between your max brightness and, you know, your midtones or a brightness in between there you'll want to go ahead and change your high range here that basically selects how much um, of this uh, setting is affecting your image so for example if we set it up real high it's only selecting the very very top bits and as we bring it down it adjusts more and more of the image So bring it back up to a thousand, and since it's orange, it's obviously going to be a little bit off balance here. And what we want to do is kind of keep it so that we don't clip any of the colors. If we clip the reds, so we bring the green up to here, then the reds are going to be over overexposed, and it's just going to look real wonky and weird. We don't want that. I should also mention if you're using footage other than raw. Uh, for example, something on a Sony or a Canon. Typically, those are recording in 8 bit 420, uh, although external recorders, you can record 422 and 10 bit if your camera supports that. You'll ideally want at least 10 bit color to do HDR. 8 bit color, you can do it if you want, but it's really not going to look that great. You're going to get a lot of banding. Um, these are, I believe, 12-bit Blackmagic RAW files, so we're working with 12-bit color right now. So what we've done on this uh, beginner introductory node is applied that initial LUT, and that LUT is sort of changing the Blackmagic log look into more of a, I don't want to say Rec. 709 because it's not, it's more of that 2100-2020 uh, look. So from this point, if, if I'll provide the LUT for this, of course, and 
it's in the description below uh, if you are doing this and exporting it and you're watching this and you're feeling okay well you know maybe it's not as saturated as I like it to be or it's too saturated obviously adjust it from there so the next thing we're gonna do um, and I should have prefaced this whole thing by saying I'm a complete noob at this there's little to no documentation on HDR mastering there's certainly no tutorials out there and I've had to figure all this stuff out for myself so I certainly don't understand every single thing about this so I'm definitely not an expert and if I'm doing something wrong please let me know uh, and if you have no idea as long along with me then well we'll try to get through this together I'm gonna add another node here because on YouTube I did a whole bunch of different tests and I've noticed that it's not YouTube doesn't really read this properly for some reason and what I have to do to get it to look right is add an a very last note at the very end to sort of compress everything back down and lowering that to this level right here and that level is set to 499 or 500 and what that's going to do is I, I've compressed basically everything back down from a thousand nits to 500 nits and I guess YouTube I either only supports 500 nits or something like that. I, I really don't know. But I've from the testing that I've done, you have to do this and then everything should look fine. Although I guess I could be doing something entirely wrong and I'm dumb, but this has worked for me. So yeah. Moving on, that's sort of your final thing. If you want to do any other correctors, go ahead. Sharpness, you know, noise reduction, whatever you want. Um I don't need that. Also, I should mention that, again, if you're using a non-HDR monitor to edit this in, this preview window is not displaying HDR, it's an SDR. So anything that you see on this is not going to look anything like what you're exporting. So keep that in mind. This is not an indicator of what your look will be. Even things like saturation, I mean, it's it's not going to look like it. So what you have to do is just pay attention to your scopes, um, vector scopes, parade. I just use you know the RGB parade here because I find that to be the most convenient. Although if you're doing like skin tones and stuff like that, you'll obviously want your vector scope to make sure your um, skin tones are in line. So next what I'm going to do is go ahead and grade this next shot, starting with the grade of the previous shot, and we should be able to see exactly what our intro LUT is doing here, beginner LUT. And now if you notice the scopes here, uh, obviously most of this middle section is going to be brighter in general. And um, there's not too much in the lows, but this is looking pretty good for me. I'm going to go ahead and I don't even need this, this one, so I'm going to go ahead and reset this. Maybe pull down those highs just a touch so we get that in line with the 1000 and then over in our you know last node bring the whole thing down now another thing you can do is just add if you obviously if you got a whole timeline just add this node to your timeline node that way you can go through all of your clips and have a really nice even 1000 mark do all that and then add that last node on the timeline. That should make things a lot easier. I should note that when you're rendering these out and you're playing them back on your HDR monitor, I've been using VLC player and with that you'll want you'll not you don't want this node basically. You don't want that final node. You want this at a thousand. And when you export it and view it in VLC it's gonna look uh, correct, hundred percent correct. And then once you do this, once you add that compressor uh, corrector node at the end then when you upload it to YouTube it'll look like your VLC file so this all looks good to me I'm gonna go ahead and go to the delivery page and we're gonna go ahead and render this out what I'm gonna do is start with QuickTime DNX HR and now for YouTube stuff this is this is all the same whether you're doing YouTube or local um, I've found that 
uh, DNxHR is the best really option. <laughs> I mean, it's the best carrier for the metadata, and uh, it's the most compatible. It's also 10-bit. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, since I'm working with 12-bit, I'm going to go ahead and select 12-bit. Although, for YouTube, I believe, I'm not sure, but I think there's a limit of 10-bit, at least at, at the time of this video. So we can go ahead and select that for YouTube, but if you're working with 12-bit uh, raw files, then and you're only going to look at local stuff, view it locally on your computer, then might as well go for the 12-bit for the highest quality, but you don't need that. Anyway, uh, make sure constant bit rate's on. I think if you turn that off, you'll have some issues with DNX. Um, not doing any audio. And I'm going to go ahead and just pop this down in here. I should mention again that in the light version of DaVinci Resolve, you won't have the option to do 4K scopes or DCI 4K. You'll only get these settings right here. Actually, you won't get 8K. You'll still get 4K though. But in the studio version, you get 8K and then you got all these other options as well. Another tip, uh, I'm not certain 100%, but I believe if even if you're not doing 4K stuff and you're doing 1080p, I would probably still recommend using HR and HR uh, HQX 10-bit. Um, if you do HD, I'm not sure that it carries over HDR metadata or not. So to be safe, I would just recommend sticking with HR and uh, HQX 10-bit. Now once you render these out, you'll want to test them in VLC player and on your HDR monitor. If you've got an HDR TV, I would recommend using that as well. Test it on VLC, make sure it looks good. I know I've had to literally go through when bef you know figuring all this stuff out. I have probably about 25, 30 clips. I would color each one of them and then export them out each one, test, come back in here, adjust my color, do it again. It was really awful and I'm thinking I need to just buy that $200 card and buy another monitor, but that's terribly inconvenient and this works pretty well. And so if you wanted to see what the results of this are, I'll leave a link down below to my video that I did grade in HDR. If you're watching that in HDR, let me know what you think. There's a particular shot in there that, actually let me just bring it up in here this shot right here looks real wonky on uh, YouTube on in that video because let me just change this real quick I've clipped it in the recording so when you're shooting for HDR be sure to not overexpose anything thanks for checking out the tutorial and if you got any questions leave them in the comments I'll see if I can get to them uh, again, I'm not an expert on any of this, and I'm still learning it, but this should be enough information to get you started and start making HDR stuff. So, yeah, there we go. Peace out.